Hello, this is Rick from MathX, and today we'll be solving number 20 from the 4th grade noetic of 2018. Now, since this is a number 20 and it's on a noetic test, that means that this problem is the final and most difficultly ranked problem on the test, meaning that this problem should be harder than all the other problems on the test. And while this problem is not easy by any means for this grade level. If we think through it and attack it algebraically, we see that this problem isn't as bad as it's cracked up to be. And getting good at these kinds of problems is not only useful for noetic, but a lot of different math competitions, as these kinds of problems are frequently found on Math Kangaroo and Moems as well. So without further ado, I'm going to get into this problem and show you how to attack and solve these kinds of problems. In a following addition problem, same letters represent the same digit, and different letters represent different digits. What digit does the letter A represent? So, in the problem, it gives us pretty obvious context that we could honestly deduce using common sense. It tells us that same letters represent the same digit. So, that means if c is 5 here, c would also have to equal to 5 here. We can't just be like c is 5 here and 3 here. No, c has to be the same number consistent throughout the entire thing. And different letters represent different digits. That means if c is 5, b cannot also be 5. Or if b is 5, a cannot also be 5. Something like that. So we can just start this attacking this problem by using some common sense. Now the first thing we should take account in this problem is carryover. When we add up two numbers, like for instance 57 and 34, the digits aren't as clear cut as they seem. Sure, we would get a 1 here, but we also have to take count for the carryover to get the 1 here, and then we would add that to the 53, getting 1 more than what 5 plus 3 would be in this case. So that means if there's any carryover, this answer would be 1 more than we would expect it to be normally. However, since we're having three numbers, the carryover can get up to two more. For instance, in this case, I've shown an example of having 1 over carryover. But if we have, let's say, like three numbers, like 57, 34, and 29, if we add this up, we're going to get 20. So we'd get 0 here, but then we'd have to carry over 2. So that means the number that can be carried over to the next place could either be 0, 1, or 2. Now we can use this to our advantage to exploit what value of c we want. If the carryover is 0, that means c plus c plus c would have to equal 20, meaning that 3c is going to equal 20. Now that doesn't work because, well, 20 is not a multiple of 3, so it won't work for any integers. Meaning that 0 cannot be carried over. If 1 is carried over, then we'd have 1 plus 3c is equal to 20. And this seems appealing at first, but then if you write that out and try to solve for it, you see that then 3c would have to equal to 19. Once again, 19 is not a multiple of 3, so this won't work again. But if 2 is carried over, we see that this works out perfectly. Because then we'd have 3c plus 2 is equal to 20. That works because then when you subtract both sides by 2, we get 3c is equal to 18, and 18 is a multiple of 3. So we can find out what value of c we want and get the digit of c. By dividing both sides by 3, we get c has to be equal to 6. So we got our first digit. Then we have to look for our second digit. If we look to the second column, we see that b plus c plus c would give us 1 here. And we already know it carries over to 2. So that gives us b plus 2c is equal to 21. Oh, but wait. Just as there could be carryover here, there could be carryover here. Well, we already know what C is, so we can plug it in. So we get that B plus 2C plus whatever gets carried over 
which could be 0, 1, or 2 in this case, is equal to 21. So I'm going to just replace this 2c with 12, because c is equal to 6. And then, if we do that, we can see how many values c could possibly be. So, we, from there, we can see a couple of things. If 0 gets carried over, that would mean b would have to equal to 9, because 9 plus 12 plus 0 would give us 21. If 1 got carried over, that would mean that b would have to equal to 8, because 8 plus 12 plus 1 would equal to 21. And if who was carried over, that would mean b would equal to 7, which because then 7 plus 12 plus 2 would equal to 21. So we see that we're not really forced with whatever b could be here. So since we can't make any deductive conclusions here, we should move on to the next row. So, in this row, we see that a plus b plus c is equal to 8. Well, we already know that c is equal to 6, so we can say that a plus b plus 6 is going to equal to 8. But remember, if a 1 gets carried over, that means it's equal to 18. Um, if a 2 gets carried over, then it's equal to 28. Now, we know it can't equal to 28, because if we max out all these digits and say they're 9, then we would get a max sum of 27. So 28 is not a valid result. Meaning that in this case, a plus b plus c would either have to be 8 or 18. Now, if we check at the overlap in the values, we see there's two cases. If a plus b plus 6 is equal to 8, well that means that a plus b has to equal to 2. And we know that this won't work, because then b would be a really small number. And for as we can tell here, in order for the b plus c plus c column to work out, b has to be greater than 7. So we see that a plus b plus 6 cannot equal to 8, because this just makes b too small to work out in the second column. So we can cross out that case. And we see that the only case that works is when a plus b plus 6 is equal to 18. Now if we want to solve for that, we see that a plus b is going to equal to 12 by subtracting 6 from both sides. So then, here we have some interesting things. Since we're going for the 18 case, we realize that 1 will be carried over. So then, since 1 is carried over, we get the equation b plus 12 plus 1 is equal to 21, meaning that b plus 13 is equal to 21. Now, solving for b by subtracting 13 from both sides, we get that b is equal to 8. So if we plug it into the equation for the third column, we get that a plus 8 is equal to 12. So subtracting 8 from both sides, we get a is equal to 4. And that's the question. They want to know what digit a represents, which we got to be 4. We can check if this is right by plugging in these values into actual numbers and seeing if they sum up to 2018. So if we write out the numbers, CBA, we're going to get 684 because C is 6, B is 8, and A is 4. CCB to be 668. And CCC to be 666. And then if we add this up, we get 4 plus 8 plus 6 to get 18, carry over the 1. 1 plus 8 plus 12 would give us 21, carry over the 2. And 2 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 would give us 2018. So we see that our answer is right in this case. A is 4. Now, at first glance, this looks like a lot of work. However, this kind of work is attainable for anyone. All we did was we went through each column, column by column, and see how this could have logically worked out. And even though it was not easy, as we kind of got stuck on the B column, by keeping what we knew about the B column and going to the A column, we could solve for both of those columns at the near same time. So with these kinds of problems, where they represent numbers as letters, you just kind of have to work through it to 
use your common knowledge and basic algebra to figure out one digit. Then as soon as you figure out that one digit, substitute it in into the equation. Then you use that said one digit to find out the next digit and the next digit. These kinds of problems you cannot solve all at once. You have to solve them step by step. But hopefully, if you work smartly, the problems will become much easier to solve. So remember, if you see a letter problem like this, first look at what you can try to exploit to get one value and plug it in and keep on doing algebra. And by doing that, you're going to get the right answer. Thank you.